Hello everyone, welcome again another episode of uh, Fundamentals uh, of Research in Medicine with Professor Fikri Abuzidan. Uh, this is our ninth episode and today we will talk about uh, what you should know uh, before you apply uh, the ethical approval. So what are the hints that you need to pay attention? Hi Prof. Hi, hi. how are you? How are you? <laughs> Uh, can we learn about you know the what the students should know about the ethical approval applications? Yeah, I think uh, students and even PhD students uh, should know about the ethical approval process in their setting. I have to stress that the ethical approval uh, of different uh, settings differ. For example, some countries uh, do not require an ethical approval for retrospective data. Uh, nevertheless, each should uh, look into their setting and should understand the regulations. And I like to stress a few important points. The first important thing you have to realize is that research is illegal. If you do research in humans or even animals, this has legal implications. So once you apply for an ethical approval to a human ethical committee, you are asking the permission to do a study on humans which may have side effects. And that has legal implications. So I want you to, although this may not apply to every setting, but I want you to understand that the ethical approvals uh, committee is exactly like a committee of jury and judge. Think of it exactly like that. Because once the, head, the ethics committee gives you a permission to do a research on humans, it should really does not harm the patients and you have to keep the confidentiality of the patients and you should give them the best treatment and you shouldn't use them. These are very basic principles that we discussed in ethics before. And accordingly, you have to follow exactly what the ethics committee tells you. So don't uh, assume that you can do a study without really an approval, if, if really, especially if it's interventional. Now, even retrospective studies, they in some countries they need ethical approval, like our, our hospitals. Yeah. Even a retrospective, because in principle, if you collect what we call it personal identifiers, and what do we mean by personal identifiers? If you are collecting data on the ID of the patient number or hospital, uh, hot, uh, hospital number, telephone number, you can attach the information of that patient to his file. And so some people may use this data. You, you hurt the patient if you don't keep their confidentiality. You have to go through the legal process. If you go to a court and there is a special form, you have to fill that form and you have to follow exactly what they tell you. Now, one, I like just to stress a simple thing. Many people don't know the difference between uh, these uh, four categories. Do you need a human ethical committee? Do you need an animal ethical committee? Do you need a social ethical committee? And do you, you don't need an ethical committee at all. And each of these has specific criteria. Now, if you collect any personal information or you measure anything personal from a patient or ask him about an opinion, even his own opinion, his own own opinion, like asking him specific what you think uh, about a very sensitive issue yeah. uh, that uh, that may jeopardize this, you need an ethical approach. And then, depending on what variables are you collecting, if you are collecting physical variables like blood pressure, temperature of a person, height of a person, weight of a person, you go for an ethical approval committee. If you really collect an opinion without interfering, like what do you think about such and such with specific information about the patient, like for example, you want to do a study on medical students and you ask their, their opinion. What do you think about this type, uh, this, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, like you are collecting about them, what's their age, what's their gender, uh, how old are they? Then you are collecting personal information, even if it's a questionnaire. And then you need a social committee research ethical approval. Now, the only situation which is an exempt, 
without any information about the the person who's responding so it's anonymous and then you collect all this data and you want to improve the the educational process in our setting it's called an exempt so let's say you are looking into the quality assurance of a hospital and how can you improve the hospital or how can you improve the educational process in general these are anonymous data so you don't really really need uh, really need an ethical approval in because there is no uh, the, the identification used at in all, the, yeah. the report so that's right yeah. but i advise you anyway to write for the ethical approval and get their exempt uh, for you know, two rather. reasons <laughs> to be sure that it's an exempt you're not asking later on and it also helps you in the publication because you can have an exempt number yeah and you say this study was exempted that's, and you give that exempt yeah. number so people know that you are ethical follow the ethical you know the processes yeah. yeah and then if you really want to do the study on animals of course you need an ethical approval from an animal ethical approval committee now in our university we have four types of ethical approval one of them is human the second is the animal the third is the social and the fourth is the chemical so if you are really getting chemical material with experiments in the university that can explode or that can, that can cause infection or that can really be be uh, make serious effect on the on the setting of your institution that needs also an approval because you can harm the people in your yeah. your institution uh, prof uh, long years you have been the ethical committee chair and uh, you probably you know get multiple applications the what are the m most missing uh, parts or you know explanations that you experienced uh, when you read the ethical uh, applications so what are the you know others or the researchers do the mistakes you know the most common yeah i think the first thing is they waste time actually but not by not asking where to send the approval <laughs> so sometimes they say they, they send uh, a social study to an ethical uh, committee, a human, human ethical committee, ethical committee and yeah. then it takes time before it's sent back. So yeah. because there is a process that goes on. So that's sending the ethical approval to the committee, which does not answer. Them. For example, if you have a hospital responsible for the, the patients, which is usually mm -hmm. each hospital should be responsible for the ethical committee of their uh, patients, which is the policy here. And then they send the ethical approval for another hospital. Uh, this is very common if you do, for example, uh, uh, what we call it uh, uh, a pre-hospital sitting. Pre-hospital sitting, uh, or you are really doing uh, like general practice. Uh, uh, pre uh, we call it ambulatory health care here. So the ambulatory health care patients are under the charge of the ambulatory health care uh, center. Or, so they should give the ethical approval. If you send it for a hospital, unless they are delegated for that, you are just wasting time. The second thing is that people do not follow the instructions. And we have actually to make a checklist. Because you, they, the students have to understand is that the ethical approval is a legal problem. And if there is something wrong and the process was not followed, the committee itself is responsible, is responsible and accountable. Yeah. So you have to follow exactly what is there. And people, I find them, they think it's a, like a superficial thing. And some people insist they don't want to follow it. The moment they say that, I used to reject directly. Because it's, if they don't follow the, the, the procedure properly, we cannot assure the quality of, of assurance. And we cannot assure the safety of the patients. Yeah. The, the other thing is that sometimes I notice that people think you send them a, a comment and they are not serious about answering it. And believe me, some of them, uh, two years, they didn't be, uh, be serious in answering what we, co we are concerned of. And it's delayed for them. So take the ethical committee. Okay, if you get a rejection from a paper, you can send it to another journal. But if you get a rejection from the ethical committee of your, of your hospital, you will not be able to do the whole study. So they have to be more serious about it. The, the other thing is really, is really to, to, uh, follow exactly what's in the ethical approval. We, once in the ethical approval, we give a permission, we give a specific procedures to be done. You cannot change it. This is a common mistake also. You have to follow exactly what is there. And if you really change that, you have to 
to send for for the for the committee uh, to make a modification of the protocol. The fifth mistake people do is to follow the procedure or research beyond the time which is given to you. If you have a driving license which is given you for, for you for two years and you drive after three years, you will be responsible and accountable for any accident you make. So it is just to understand, and I want to stress this again, yeah. uh, the ethical committee is really very serious. If you want to do research, you have to know your environment. You, if you don't know, you ask to more senior people. It's a learning curve. Uh, it's good to know how to address these issues, and it would help you actually to refine your uh, research. And as I stressed before, the ethical committee can also help you in improving the design of your research. So yes. listen to them. I think it will be very useful. And don't do research without understanding exactly what is needed from you to do from a legal point of view. Yes. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you so much. Thank you, Arif. Thank you.